Hello everybody and welcome to another Black Mamba oversized review. In today's video we're taking a look at the Black Mamba LS09, part of their kind of leader series. They're based on the MPM figures. This is the Weaponeer. Uh, it is of course a slightly oversized, slightly retooled version of Ironhide uh, based on his MPM counterpart. Quick look around the box. We've got some artwork on the side. We've got his vehicle mode. There he is sporting his weaponry and his paint scheme. Nice big solid box and of course being Black Mamba we do get the preview window as well so we can have a look at the product and look at the artwork prior to purchasing. And here we have the beautiful beast out of his plastic cage. Uh, we do get some kind of weathered Artillery, let's go with him, and we do get LEDs. Shh, mine came with batteries pre-installed. <laughs> and we get one on this side as well. Nice blue one. We get a split Autobot insignia, which we can attach. That's in two parts. And then we get Ironhide himself. Now, Straight out of the package. Uh, my shoulders were not quite right. Uh, there still needed to be some tweaking. Uh, there's a ball hinge uh, right underneath here now, which plugs into these wheels to try and keep those shoulders in to position. Now I know that Black Apple were planning on doing an iron hide uh, with lots and lots of tweaks, but uh, there's a few things happening behind the scenes with the Wei Zhang at the moment, they're rebranding and they're possibly taking a different route, but I may do a full video on that because it's very interesting. Things are definitely afoot and things are definitely changing up. But let's see how he compares to the other iron hides. Here he is alongside regular MPM iron hide. And here we have him alongside the custom leader class iron hide that I had done. If you're interested in looking at more info on this custom, I'll include a link at the end of the video, but definitely more on par with that leader height and obviously we have the differences in paint as well that black mamba and legendary toys etc they're all kind of renowned for tweaking the paint uh, looks a lot cleaner in my opinion and really does tidy up nicely especially around that face area i mean they get me wrong uh, i do like the original face and the paint scheme on that face but at the same time I do like having those blue LED lights in the eyes. Uh, the button is just on the side of the antennae there. Just touch that. And I think the kind of metallic look to it, uh, kind of that gun metal, really does make the world of difference. The same goes for the sections as well. Just little tiny tweaks is all it really takes to make it a better figure. This was good, but there was just a lot of problems with it, especially like around those shoulders. A lot of heft in the feet, etc. Actually more heft in this probably than in this. There's not a great deal in it. It's definitely not as much die cast, if any, in the Black Mamba one. But the shoulders do kind of stay put a lot better. It's really difficult to show you uh, but uh, on this hinge on the inside here, uh, where it slopes upwards, there's, there's a ball and it actually turns into an open socket on the back of these wheels, which kind of locks that section into place. And the result is a nice sturdy look for Einheit, but still something very, very off about the placement of those arms. Obviously these sections here can go wherever you want them to. I just kind of have them resting over the back of the shoulders. Now that he's got these big old chunky guns as well, everything's all painted up nicely. He really does look the part. And for a scale comparison with a variety of different figures there. Yes, that's the Dark of the Moon version of Black Mamba's Prime there. So I'm gonna have this as kind of my Dark of the Moon Ironhide. And so I thought I'd bring in Sentinel, who now appears to be way too short. So let's hope, fingers crossed, that we're going to get somebody like Sentinel kind of retooled 
and uh, remade into this style and size because uh, he's looking a little outdated now, isn't he? And for those wanting an exact size, he's around the nine and a half inch mark, nearly 10, which is around 24 to 25 centimeters. If this is your first time viewing the Ironhide mold, the head can look up, around, down. We do have mouth on there. No quizzical tilting though. Shoulders can come out to the back. We do have a ratchet joint there. We have a bicep rotation. We have a bend on that bicep and elbow there. We have rotation on the wrist. We get some pinned fingers and a pinned thumb. There is waist rotation in there. I'd right, say so quick look at this backpack. I've got some sprue marks on mine where they don't really want to rotate very well. Uh, there's a lot of resistance there. I'm not sure if it's meant to slide a little bit more, but that's how it sits nice and tidily up the top there. And what you want to do, you want to pull that tab out. And it's going to come down and uh, out of the box. It's basically flat like so and flat like so. And then this comes up and that just sits square like so. And then you can press all of this under section. So it's basically this part here, which turns around on itself as well. And just look at that abdominal crunch. Look, that is crazy. We've got this uh, rotation there on the legs as well. You can drop those down or stump them up. Legs can come this far forward on really nice solid ratchets this far back. The sideways motion is really difficult to accomplish on Ironhide, that's kind of it. The joint is there, but there's so much hindrance with all this extra kibble. Coming down to the knees, we've got a bend on that knee again, hindered by this kibble section. And coming down to the feet, we've got up and down, really nice ratchet on those. And we do have a pivot left and right, and we have joints on pretty much all of these toes. So in theory, with the nice wide stance and those tight joints, he should be able to stand really nicely with a nice wide stance there. No issues whatsoever. And I mean, shake the base there. He's a pretty well balanced figure as well. So you can get these kind of action going into action, kind of dynamic poses going on and there's no fear of him tumbling down. But as handsome as Ironhide looks, uh, he does, of course, transform. So let's uh, just turn all of these little lamp features off. And let's get him changed up into his pickup. It's deformation time. Right, we're gonna start off with these feet. You want to fold these panels in on the bottom. Fold this panel in on the bottom. Come around to these thighs and they're actually tabbed in. So you want to untab this with the feet bent down. These tabs here, untab at the back and this tab is gonna come all the way around and it's actually on an extending hinge. So this rotates up and that's just gonna come around out of the way like so. And with these sections back, this wheel is gonna come down and there's a tab just inside this knee area where that is gonna push and tab in. And when we bring this wheel in, just make sure that this hubcap section is up so it'll slide underneath. This will then tab in on here. This can then come back. The toes on the back of the truck will come down and they're gonna tab in just on the rear, like so. The feet tuck under. Looking at these legs, these are just gonna line up. Line up with that panel like so. And this piece here flips over. And again, we've got two more of these tabs, which are gonna line up, securing this all into position. Straighten those legs out 
and then just push and lock those all in together. And then we've got space on the back there to place our insignia. So no way is it ever compromised. Detach his weapons and bring those arms back and out round to the back. Lift these panel pieces up and then we're going to unplug these wheels. They are just tabbed in. Like so, you see that ball socket there? Don't know if you can see that, there we go. That now tabs into there, that's what keeps all that locked into position. It's a matter of kind of fiddling with the ball to get it into the right position, but then that's when you push it in and that locks them shoulders in. But yep, they are now unlocked. And getting up close and personal, there's this joint here. And this torso tab, that's just gonna unpop, like so, which allows this entire joint to now move freely up and out of the way. Still not the most attractive <laughs> of joints, but I guess uh, you make do with what you've got. Right, we have this backpack panel. This is gonna come and sit down like so. That's gonna form the back. Push and lock that in. Here we go, we can bring these back down and they're gonna push and hold all of that back panel in together, starting to get there, isn't it? On this side, rock that back, bring that around, and you can see that's gonna form the top of the vehicle. The arm's gonna come in and bend, and this panel here is going to rock all the way over, and then come down. There's a hinge just on the top of these arms. That allows those to come in, lift this panel up, this section is going to push down, that's going to form part of the bonnet that will come out from the top, leaving the void in the center there so we can just straighten up Einheit's head. And that's going to sit nice and low on the underside. Um, for the bottom, I do want to switch these out because we have a GMC section already on the bumper. We're going to bring those down, this is going to come down and bend like so on that double hinge. And now it's just a matter of tidying up all this mess. So bring the wheels in. And with those shoulders nice and square, these wheels are gonna tab in at two points. There and there. And with a lot of pushing and tabbing, I got it together. There was no way I could do that on camera, I uh, still don't, haven't got it completely right because the bonnet, because the windscreen isn't tabbed into the front of this bonnet piece. Uh, tidies up a lot better. I think we've got the feet tucked in on the underside here. These have locked in nicely. See Ironhide's head there. That is a big solid lump. I mean, that's not gonna disengage at any point. And we can put the weapons on the side if need be. Of course this is entirely optional. Just uh, kind of adds to the play value. I'm not a fan of mounting weapons like so but each to their own. But personally like I said I'm not a huge fan of uh, having the weapons on the side of the vehicles it's just not not my cup of tea really but let's get some other vehicles in here for a scale comparison i think we officially have kind of a human alliance sized version of ironhide much kind of wider and sturdier than the leader class figures although my bumpers do tend to keep popping off uh, scale wise maybe even bigger than human alliance we bring in human alliance figure hmm Maybe they're a fraction too small. What about if we bring in Thew? That is definitely Thew, isn't it? Just need to have the camera kind of looking up at him like this. And a... <laughs> yes, Thew, that's, that's all I get from your reviews, honestly. <laughs> oh, I love Matthew, he's a top chap. Uh, there we go. And we have Thew alongside Ironhide as well, and I personally think that's actually in a really amazing scale. I think the mask figures, which I think are uh, 
2.5, I think, and I think they definitely work. That's a good scale for those. What are your thoughts? So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Black Mamba take on Ironhide. Fantastic looking figure, nice, big, solid piece, which rolls remarkably well, but it's not without its flaws. Uh, the panels are still exactly that. The panels, they don't tab in as perfectly as I would like, but size-wise and build quality-wise, it's definitely above par compared to the Hasbro Stroke Takara MPM version. This is the superior model in my opinion now we don't have things like the road armor logo etc on the front of the bumper but I mean, that's a pretty decent flatbed truck what more could we ask for thanks again to tf direct for making this review possible until next time for myself and i hide ah, goodbye